Well, guys, sit back and relax because today I'm going to help you guys get started with Vault Hunters 118. Over the last few weeks, I've been playing on the Vault Hunters SMP server, and this has given me a lot of time to really gather a ton of information about this mod pack and to share with you guys. In this guide, I'm going to be sharing tons of topics such as how we actually get the altar, how we find our crystals, skill points, unlocking mods, and many, many more, including in-depth vault information. Now, when you first join your world, you're going to notice the terrain is quite is quite different from the vanilla terrain. Terralith is in this mod pack and it just gives you so much variety as far as biomes to explore. Now, while you're on your journey trying to find a sweet part, now while you're on your journey trying to find that sweet spot to call home, you may find yourself wondering what you're looking at and to toggle it on, all you gotta do is hit numpad one, go into your key binds and all you have to do is change that, uh, that setting for Jade. And uh, yeah, it's really handy to be able to toggle that on and off so you can see what you're looking at. After you've found that sweet place to call home, like I was saying, it's time to start figuring out how to craft the altar. This block right here that is in my hands is crafted with obsidian, a couple of chromatic ingots, which we're gonna talk about here in a second, and some stone. So it is quite easy to get set up. This is what we're gonna be using to craft our crystals that are going to allow us to go into vaults and get started running vaults. It's still powered the same way. Once you put the recipes in and your crystals, all you gotta do is give it a redstone signal and it will craft the crystal. Now, how do we go about getting the chromatic iron? Well, there's actually two different things that we're gonna have to get right from the start, and that's vault rock, and we're also gonna need chromatic iron. Let me kind of explain where to get that. Now, mining down below, you're gonna wanna definitely mine at deep slight level around negative 30 button below to be able to find the two things that you're gonna need to get started. And one of those is going to be a little bit harder to find than the other. You can see these three big rocks right here. These are going to be vault stone. This is one of the things you need to find in mine. Probably gonna be one of the first things you encounter. And uh, if you mine it, there's a chance it's going to drop chipped vault rock. Now, chipped vault rock is what you use in order to craft yourself a crystal, but you also need chromatic iron ingots. And chromatic iron ingots, well, it's gonna be a little bit tougher to find them. Uh, as you can see throughout all of this, it's a pretty rare ore, but right over here is the ore. So you can see right here, this is chromatic iron. It looks very, very similar to the deep uh, slate uh, fluorite. So you are probably going to encounter fluorite, get excited, and then realize it's not chromatic, <laughs> or you're gonna think it's chromatic and it's gonna actually be fluorite. Um, but all you have to do is mine this, and thankfully, after you've mined it, and go into your first vault, you probably won't have to worry about it too much anymore because it will spawn inside of the vault in the uh, the chest, the loot chest. Now, once you have your first vault rock, go ahead and slam that thing into the vault altar and you're gonna get a nice list of items. Now, thankfully, these should pertain to only the overworld, so it should be fine there. And then, of course, you need a button to give this power. You can also place the button on there, get a little bit of fighting or place it on the side or place it on a wall, it really doesn't matter. But once you collect all these items and toss them in, for example, we need cobblestone. So we can just grab a little bit of cobblestone and we can toss this directly in. And as you can see, it completes it. Once all of the items are in, we can then craft it. Now, this is going to be based on your level upon crafting. So keep in mind, if you begin to become a higher level than zero, you know, the vault level is going to represent that. But you can actually bring the vault level down by crafting it with a diamond. We can't actually do that because we're level zero, but if you want to bring it down, you can do this. Uh, now, one of the benefits of uh, having a lower than 10 level crystal is we get a thing called a beginner's grace. And it's basically like afterlife, uh, but if you die in the vaults, you get to keep your things. However, you do not gain XP from the vault. Just a little quick thing to mention. Now, before you go into your first vault, you may want to check out these settings that are in your escape menu and in your options. You do have some settings here for vault difficulty. So if you want a little bit of help in the vault, uh, set this thing to easy, or if you want a little challenge, set it to impossible. Um, and then you also have your standard difficulty and these can also be locked. So be sure to uh, remember that. Now there are some accessibility options as well. So we do have some game rules. To run this, all you have to do is type vault. And as you can see, there are several of them. One of them is waypoints allow. This is gonna allow you to place a waypoint in the vault. You can also set your mode to casual as well. This is on casual mode. And then of course, there are a couple of other things that uh, 
are not as not as relevant. How could I? I almost forgot to mention, how do you actually craft yourself a portal or make yourself a portal? Well, you're gonna take that vault cobblestone that you mined up and you're gonna smelt it down into polished versions of it. And uh, well, all you have to do is build yourself a traditional portal, just like so. And uh, you can make it special sizes, but it does need to follow the trend of a normal portal. And all you have to do is place your vault crystal that you crafted on it, and bam, you can jump right into your first vault. So once you have yourself some unspent skill points and you have yourself a few levels, um, really, we're gonna start working on what skills you should choose. Now, this is definitely dependent upon your play style, but I'm gonna go over a few recommendations that I, you know, I suggest. Now, I almost forgot to open up this menu, hit H on your keyboard. Also, if you're enjoying this video thus far, be sure to click that subscribe button. All right, let's get back into it. First things first, spec into heal. Heal is one of the most powerful things in the vaults. It is going to give you the ability to regen a few of your hearts every few seconds, every 10 seconds at a little bit of a mana cost. This thing is a must. Now, next is where things get a little bit interesting. Um, I would definitely recommend potentially going into fear next. Fear may sound a little bit weird, but you can, you can spec into taunt. Uh, as well as a specialization. Uh, taunt is going to basically make mobs come towards you, but fear is going to make mobs move away from you for a short period of time, giving you a little bit of chance to break spawners. Um, now, some other things I would recommend at this point is I would recommend either spending some points on dash, however you do take some fall damage, spending your points on dash, or start saving up for strength and speed. I, in this order, I would take speed first, and then I would go for strength or haste. Haste is gonna let you break spawners faster. Strength is gonna let you deal more damage to mobs. Honestly, I would go speed, strength, and then haste. All of these are really, really good, but they do cost a little bit of extra points. And then from that point, it's really just up to you. Next thing on the list is talking about how do we unlock mods. And uh, to unlock a mod, all we're gonna have to do is craft ourselves a knowledge star you are gonna find the ingredients for this inside the vault. And uh, the ingredients are actually quite nice. All we need is eight vault diamonds and we are going to need what's called an extraordinary biniotite. It is just biniotite that is crafted together, taking perfect and turning it into extraordinary. And then this gets crafted into a knowledge core. And then of course we take knowledge essence to craft the knowledge shards and those make the knowledge star. And all of this you get in the vault chests inside of the vault. So uh, it's going to take a little bit of time to maybe get your first, but really things really start to pick up after we uh, after you pass level ten and you start to move forward. Um, you're going to find all of this stuff right off the bat. Now let's talk about maybe some of the first mods you should unlock. Now there's a huge list of mods that you should unlock first, and some may have different preferences. In my opinion, I think going for simple storage is probably one of the best. Even though it does require two, it is worth the wait. Because by the time that you get simple storage, you're gonna have enough points to spend on maybe waystones and also pouches. Now pouches, I don't suggest maybe going right away on those, simply because you're probably not gonna have the resources in order to craft your first pouch. So give it some time, start with simple storage network, get yourself a crafting grid, then maybe go waystones if you're playing on a server, or even vault compass if you're scared about getting lost in the vaults, and then go pouches, because pouches is definitely gonna be one of those mods that is worth getting into, as it's basically a dank. Now, as we start moving forward, this is gonna be some of the things that you get from the vault here that are really important. This is your vault gear, and it is going to drop unidentified. It's gonna be in chests, and uh, you're gonna find it you know, quite rare. It's gonna be quite rare. You're gonna find it in ornate chests, which are, we'll go over in a little bit, but this right here, all you have to do is roll them, and uh, even Scrappy gear, which you're going to have different tiers, Scrappy, Uncommon, Rare, Epic, and Omega, they uh, all have a chance of rolling different things. So as you can see right here, and then of course, the keys do their own thing, um, which these, I don't even know if you can find them yet. Uh, but here is all of our gear. So we basically have all these different things, and you might notice that there are implicits, prefixes, and suffixes. These are all going to be incredibly important as we move forward into how we're actually going to modify our gear. Because modifications on our gear is actually quite nice. 
So I'm gonna try my best to explain some of the new machines and mechanics that are actually in here that involve all of our vault gear. So these are going to be in this list, uh, Vault Forge, Vault Artisan Station, Vault Recycler, Tool Vice, and then a Magnet Modification Table. So these are gonna be some of the main machines you're gonna interact with early on. Now the Vault Forge is how you craft armor. So you can actually craft vault gear in this method. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna make vault alloy, which is kind of expensive early on, but you will be able to get these ingredients fairly soon. Um, and then you also need vault gold, which you find in the vault. And of course, diamonds you find in the vault in a nugget form. And then you also find netherite in there. So whenever you do craft these, for example, if I craft a shield and I hit this button, it's gonna craft, but it's also going to bring up my proficiency in this craft. Uh, which means that later on, once our proficiency has gone up higher, we will have the chance of this not rolling novice. It will roll higher than novice. Um, similar to how it worked in the last version of this. If you're familiar with that, it'll go like novice and will continue higher, which will give you a higher chance of rolling better gear. When I mention better gear, I'm meaning it'll roll unidentified. It'll roll... Um, Scrappy, it'll roll common plus, or it'll roll um, rare, epic, or omega, like I said. So you'll have a higher chance of getting something that's higher than that. And uh, as you can see, boop, we can go ahead and roll this. Now, moving on to the next station is gonna be something you're gonna be spending a lot of time on with your gear. Because earlier I mentioned implicits, suffixes, and prefixes. So you can see just on this piece alone, if you hold shift, we have a prefix slot and a suffix slot. These are two different modifier slots and there can be more than one depending on the tier of the gear, but our implicits will stay at the same. Implicits are the constant rolls, whereas the prefix and suffixes can be modified. Now, keep in mind, we also have crafting potential, which is set to 45. If I throw this in here and I use a wild focus and it tells you inside the artist's artisan station what each of these focuses do, which you'll find in the vaults, by the way, same with these materials, you can see it's gonna cost a little bit to do this, but at the moment it has no prefix and has poisonous cloud. If I roll this, this is going to re-roll the prefixes and suffixes together. And the interesting thing is it can actually complete that prefix, even though it's not completed. But as you can see, we did get an attack speed on here. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and just unlock that prefix, if we lock our suffix, we can use an amplifying focus. And that is going to lock, unlock that. And you can see we have plus one cleaving range. And we also have that 10 attack speed. Um, and we can keep re-rolling this and re-rolling. And I want to show you how that crafting potential is going down until we hit one. And as you can see, I am out of materials. But what this is going to do is it is going to make the cost of our uh, re-roll more and more expensive. And you can do this for all of your different gear and including the higher tiers. This is gonna be something you're spending a lot of time in as the artisan station. Next is the recycler. When you're ready to give up on your gear, you just toss it in here and it's supposed to give you vault scrap. It's supposed to. I don't know if scrappy gear doesn't give you any vault scrap, but it's supposed to, I think. <laughs> Um, and this would actually normally give you like uh, just your vault scrap back. It's just a, a way to get that back. The tool vice, now we're getting into two different other mechanics. Now, in this, we can actually craft pickaxes. So as you can see, we have a scrappy pickaxe right here. Um, and these all have their different crafting recipes. Pretty easy to get into, but it's going to allow us to do some different things. We have durability, we can increase reach, mining speed, and then we also have the um, copious, uh, which is kind of hard to explain. This right here will give you more vault ore, basically, kind of out of it. Um, it's kind of like fortune for vault here, I believe. The thing is, if we go to craft with this and I go to add durability, notice this says 95%. That's a 95% chance that it's going to break. So if I keep going, now it's at a 90% chance that it's gonna break, again, 85, but eventually it will break. So it has broken, as you can see, um, which is very unfortunate, but that's the price you pay when you're trying to get something nice with this. 
Now, this same premise applies for magnets. Once you've crafted a magnet, you can put this in here and do the same exact thing as that, except we have durability, range, velocity, and mana efficiency. Um, mana efficiency is supposedly, you use mana in the overworld for it. Um, velocity means the items will come to you quicker. Range, of course, increases the range of your magnet, and then durability gives you more overall durability. And yes, it does use durability in the overworld, and it also uses durability in the vaults. So keep that in mind when you're crafting it. I feel like durability and range and velocity are probably the most important, whereas mana efficiency, maybe not so much. Uh, we do get, as you can see, you can see the mana efficiency right there. But overall, that's basically all the tools, except for this. This is the demagnetizer. If you don't want your magnet to work in an area in your base while you have it equipped, just put a demagnetizer and uh, you won't have to worry about your magnet working inside of your base. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's talk more about the vaults, the vaults themselves, and how we can actually go about doing them and uh, a little bit more information about how the actual vaults function. So first of all, well, we probably need to go into a vault. So let's head into our first vault here. And uh, all these vaults are going to have different themes around them. So this one is a really nice desert theme. You can see there's a bunch of different themes and there's probably gonna be more added as the pack goes on. Now, of course, you're gonna run through here and you're gonna be like, what do I do? Well, there's these things called POIs or points of interest. And uh, they're gonna be upstairs, they're gonna be downstairs, there's gonna be on the main level. And what you wanna do is you wanna first figure out the direction of the vault that you're going. In my case, I'm going east. And you're gonna find these things. Yes, these are vault, vault fighters that you're going to encounter. You're also gonna encounter normal mobs. And as you can see, that spawner that was there spawned these three guys and then despawned. And that's exactly what is going to happen. Um, some of the spawners will stay, some will not. But once they despawn and you've defeated these guys, well, it's just open for you guys to start looting these chests. And also these coin piles. You can see these are coin piles. When you break them, they drop coins. So there's uh, there's tons of these. You have this one over here. You can see, you can hear the noise too. When that noise happens, the spawner breaks. Like there was a spawner there. And as you can see, I can start looting all of these. Of course, you would want to clear out the fighters. And these rooms are quite large and they're very vertical. So as you can see, there's one here. There's points of interest all over the place on the bottom, on the top. And uh, this is just one room. You gotta keep in mind the vaults, they look like this. They are quite large. Um, also, there are special rooms. So they're quite large, they do span out. And uh, even on your first few, they're going to be like this with long hallways, and big points of interest. And then you're also going to find different types of rooms. These are common rooms, and uh, you're gonna find different rooms such as challenge rooms, and omega rooms, and uh, vendor rooms. There's all kinds of stuff to be had in these. And like I said, it's a blast every time I've done them, and they've definitely gotten better over the last few weeks of, of us alpha testing. So be prepared, be prepared, because there's a lot of shenanigans. Now, you do also have two different modes, um, this right here, as you can see, has an obelisk. This is going to be a boss challenge. And then you also have a scavenger count challenge. A scavenger challenge is going to allow you, is going to want you to get items from chests, from mobs, and from coin piles. And uh, you're going to have a turn in point. Where does this? All you have to do is complete all of the obelisks by right clicking on them. And the last obelisk will spawn a boss. And uh, you'll have to take that boss on. This right here, I don't want to spoil some of the vaults, but. This is an X Martha spot room, and uh, this is considered a challenge room. And there's a chance that underneath here could be good or could be bad. Uh, I don't know, it's up to, for you to decide. Now, if you do plan on running a co-op, there's a few things that you can do. First, you need to party and then create, and then you'll add an invite to a party. That'll prevent you guys from attacking each other inside of the vault. Uh, next, when you do go into the vault, uh, when it comes to a scavenger run, you guys are both gonna have your own separate scavengers uh, to complete. And so you can work together to complete those items uh, for each other, but both are separate. Um, you can leave the vault together, um, which uh, like you can leave the vault separately. So one person can leave and then another person can leave um, normally in a co-op vault if you both go in. If one person dies in the co-op vault and it does not have the grace on it that you get before level 10, um, 
you can actually carry your partner out. So if you go in together and your partner dies, you, have, you can find your partner, pick up their ghost body, and literally carry them through the portal. And after you've done that, there is a special machine that you can put it into to actually get your items back. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh yeah, and, and you can also play football if you have more than more than two people. Oh my god. Hey, 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 go over there, go over there, son. You look you look like a football right now. Wait, hold on. Wait. I'm gonna see I'm gonna see if you can catch. Early? Try and right click what's in the air. Here, <laughs> oh, ready? No, hey. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh no, do you have to shift right click? You just oh, right click. There goes. You right click here. There, it's us. <laughs> one. Go long. Right. Oh, go Sorry, did you know your dead body was gonna be a football? Yeah, oh, I didn't cool down. Like this at all. That's a cool down. Oh, that's funny. Also, while you're in the vaults, you may encounter these huge mobs called elites. And they're also gonna become jam-packed with other mobs. And, uh, well, don't let them hit you. You might regret that. And they all have different models and stuff, which are really, really cool. Now, some more facts about vaults. The more stuff you do, the more mobs you kill, the more chests you loot, the more uh, ores you break, the more of the coin piles you break, everything like that gives you XP, especially these elite guys. If, yeah, you kill these guys, you're gonna have tons of XP. All of this adds up to the XP total whenever you leave the vault. And uh, believe me, you're gonna wanna try to do as much as possible to get as much XP as possible before leaving. Now, for those of you who may be new to vaults, check out that timer in the bottom left-hand corner. That timer is, uh, well, what, how much time you have left in the vault? If that timer depletes before you have left the vault or completed the challenge, well, you're gonzo. Uh, unless you have grace before level 10. Otherwise, you're, you're completely gonzo. Or if you have afterlife. We'll talk about afterlife here in a second. Now, if you die in the vault with your gear on, well, <laughs> and you don't have any of those helping tools like grace or afterlife, you, all of your stuff's gone. Uh, yeah, you clean wipe slate, you, no armor, no gear, no items. Yeah, you, all of your items that are in your inventory are gone. So you're gonna have a win-lose battle there, trying to figure out whether or not you want to use Afterlife. Now, in regards to Afterlife, it has a new recipe. So to make yourself a soul flame, this thing right here, which you apply to your crystal in an anvil, it now uses eternal souls. These are also used inside of a cryo chamber to get yourself an eternal. So you're gonna have to balance using that. It also costs a wither skeleton skull, which uh, is a bit more expensive now as they're not as common inside the vaults. But if you do use the soul flame, as of right now, as of the time of re-recording, it is uh, a 50% loss on your XP gained in the vault while you have this on there. Um, an another downside is if you die and you have this on, you also get zero experience. Whereas if you die and you lost your stuff, you would at least get the experience from the vault that you'd gained thus far. So it's a win-lose, but uh, I definitely recommend if you have some good stuff on and you think you're gonna die or you're going in as a team, you might wanna use a soul flame. Now, here's another little tidbit. Um, if you do have beginner's grace and you do go in as a co-op vault and one person dies while you have beginner's grace, you both die. And uh, there's no save in your body in that case. But like I said, that is just from level 10 uh, before level 10. Because after level 10, everything gets back to normal. Now, once you've completed the vault, this is the screen that is going to pop up. And it's going to tell you a little information about the vault and how much experience you gained, how many mobs you've unalived, the modifiers that were on your crystal, how many chests you opened, and the different typings. There's so much more information. And... Uh, there's, I mean, there's just tons and tons of information. And then you have a button to claim. The same thing works with a boss. If you kill a boss, you don't get the drop right away. The drop is actually contained within this menu. And when you hit claim, you'll actually complete the vault and get your crate from doing so. Pretty awesome. Now there's one last thing before I can conclude, I guess the basics of Vault Hunters and how to get started. Um, and that is a new thing that was added called bounties. Bounties are incredibly new, and uh, you basically create yourself a bounty table, fairly cheap, and you get a bounty table menu. You have three different types of bounties that you can work towards, and as you can see right here, it says kill vault spiders in the vault. You need to kill 38 spiders inside of the vault, and you will get rewarded with these items. I know, pretty nice, right? 
This one is also a kill, it looks like. And then this one is a submit item. So we have submit types, we have a kill type, and I think the other one is a find type. So you have to find items inside the vault, which are usually scavenger related items. But yeah, or any item really. But you turn these in by just right clicking the item on here. But first you have to activate them. Once they're activated, bam, you can then start working towards that challenge to get these items and XP rewarded. Awesome, I mean, this is a pretty cool mechanic, honestly. And uh, if you want to re-roll something, let's say you don't like this, it will cost you a little bit of bronze. You can see nine bronze to re-roll this. After you've completed or abandoned one of these entries, you are gonna have to wait a little bit of time. Abandoning one, I think, uh, adds a lot more time. Whereas on a normal one, just waiting for it to re-roll, I think takes two hours. This one is going to take you eight hours. Now, all in all, I think I've done my best to, to sort of explain some of the ins and outs of the new Vault Hunters 118. And uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching my streams thus far. And uh, there's, of course, more to come. If you haven't checked me out over on Twitch, it's twitch.tv forward slash chosen architect. And of course, be sure to click that subscribe button here. Also, guys, leave a comment down below. If there's any more questions, I will try my best to answer any questions you have regarding Vault Hunters down in the comment section below. So be sure to ask those. And guys, I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.